your resources now and make this declaration. I will go, I will go, I will go. Save it. 
save anybody If you only trust in Him He will save you from your sin Cleanse your heart with Him If you only trust in Him He will save you from the rim Cleanse your heart with Him Buenas noches, mis amigas. Buenas noches. Buenas, buenas. All right. Good evening, friends. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies born and unborn, wherever you are in the world. We welcome you to the Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus online evangelistic series. Of course, we are sponsored by the five English-speaking territories in the Inter-American Division of Seventh-day Adventist and our international speaker for the series, Sasha Lynn, yes. is none other than, yes, you guessed it, G.O. Samuels. That's it. Pastor Samuels himself. And so this evening, we'd like you to know that we're broadcasting live from, the, from Montego Bay right here in Jamaica. I am Kamara Dixon alongside... Sashalyn Hay. Alongside Sashalyn Hay. And brothers and sisters, I'd like you to know tonight, we have a guest, a guest host. And he's from the beautiful island of the Bahamas. Bahamas is known to have the third largest reef, Sashalyn, oh, yes. in the world. And of course, we go over now to him to share with us. Pastor Eric Clark, are you with us? Okay, it seems as if we, he is not on this evening. As yet. As yet. Yes. But the devil is defeated. And so we have the unions, Kamara. Sure. We have the Dutch Caribbean Union, the Jamaica Union, right. the Atlantic Caribbean Union. The Dutch Caribbean Union uh, as well. And the Caribbean Union. I think yes. we have all of them. And so this evening, though, we are focusing on one of the countries from the union, and that is... 
the Turks, Turks and, and Caicos, Caicos Island. And guess what? They are known for their salt exportation. Mm. And while they're exporting salt, no wonder their color is white. Ah. Because it represents the salt, and they are indeed the salt of the earth. The but the earth. not to be undone tonight, Kamara, we do have some platforms worshipping with us tonight. Do you mind just telling me two? Sure, no problem. We'd like to ensure that our viewers know, Sashalene, that locally we are on NCU Radio and NCU TV. Tell us the rest. Of course, <laughs> and that's NCU Radio at 91.1, 0.3, and 0.5. Definitely hope beyond dot net, not to mention Praise FM at 87.9. CATV and REM Radio at 89.1 FM in St. Vincent. Mm -hmm. And we have one that is in St. Kitts and Nevis called WGOD at 97.9 FM. Now, Pastor was to be with us tonight, but he's not here. However, there's one set of people in his little part of the territory right there over yes. in Berry Islands. Island. And we just want to say shout out to the leader over there, Mrs. Campbell. Right. And alongside her, we have Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Mackey. Mackey. Hi. We just want to say shout out to those of you yes. who are watching in your communities, on the roadside, on big screen TV. That's right. Courtesy of projectors. Exactly, Sashi. <laughs> we say are that so again. happy that you're able to join us tonight. Kamara, we also note mm -hmm. that they are also joining on all local TV stations and your, your conferences and union platforms. That's Facebook and YouTube. What should they right. do when they get onto those platforms? Well, sure, guys, when you get on those platforms, be sure to subscribe of to course. whichever platform that you're on and like the Facebook pages. But most importantly, Remember to share the link, tell a friend to tell a friend that something excellent is happening here excellent. At, at, at Footprints of Hope. But guys, remember also, send in your prayer requests because at the moment of prayer, we will be praying for those, the evangelists and others will be praying for you as well. And so Absolutely. right now, we want to transition to our theme song. So we're going to do that now. But before we do that, I'd like to remind you that right after the service this evening, join the evangelist and his team in the VIP room. Oh, yes, yes, the VIP room. Look out for that link inside the YouTube or the Facebook chat. So right, right now we go over to our praise team the for the theme bill. song. Yes. But you sent a savior 4,000 years later so that men young and old now can tell of your footprints of all. Footprints of all, footprints of all. 
Let's bow our heads as we pray. Almighty God and our Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you this evening for your wonderful blessings. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us since our birth, but more so since the start of this great campaign. Our Heavenly Father, you have blessed our hearts. You have watered our souls. And right across this world, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your wonderful blessings. And this evening, as we grace another Sabbath, we have come to be charged. We have come to be inspired. We, are co we, have, we have come to be informed. And so we ask that thy sweet Holy Spirit will take control of the entire program this afternoon. And at the end, may someone be able to testify, I have met Jesus this evening. So take full control, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Welcome to, to this online space where you will learn how to update your status and upgrade your life. It is our joy to journey with you for this life-changing experience. We're happy you're connected from all over the Caribbean, Belize, Suriname, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, Sabre, St. Eustatius, Guyana, St. Lucia, Grenada, the Cayman Islands, the Bahamas, and beyond the Caribbean. We do not want anyone to lose out on this once in a lifetime encounter. Whether you like to listen to soca, calypso, hip hop, R&B, roots rock, reggae, or hardcore dance hall music. If you want music that touches the core of your soul, don't move. Stay connected and enjoy the thrilling music and the inspirational messages, message from our spirit-filled, true-to-life, compassionate evangelist, Pastor Glenn O. Samuels. Invite your friends to join this amazing journey where you will have your joys and your hopes fulfilled as we walk with Jesus in this Footprints of Hope evangelistic series. Whether you like to LOL, DWL, or slide in your DM, this is the place to be. I welcome you to another evening that I know will be life-changing. God bless you. Good evening, saints of God. It is truly a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord this evening where we are afforded the opportunity to sing praises unto his high and holy name. At this moment, we ask that you will just assume an attitude of praise as we sing praises to the most high. Jehovah is his name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Oh, 
refers to temperance. The World Health Organization Global Status Reports on Alcoholism 2018 states that the harmful use of alcohol is one of the leading risk factors for population health globally. That said report stated or indicated that in 2016, there were 3 million alcohol-related deaths globally. Of these 3 million, those 3 million deaths, 28.7% were as a result of injuries, 21.9% from digestive problems, 19% cardiovascular problems, 12.9% infections related to alcohol, and uh, 12.6% from cancers. Of interest especially, should be of interest to all young people, it states that 13% of those deaths occurred between the ages of 20 and 39 years. Talk about premature death, certainly alcohol contributes to premature death. Another substance commonly used is that of tobacco. And although more persons uh, consume alcohol than tobacco, many more people die from tobacco-related uh, conditions. And the Global Status Report on the, on the tobacco epidemic states that 8.7 million deaths annually as a result of tobacco and the tobacco is one of the major cause of preventable deaths, preventable morbidity or sickness as well as deaths. And it is for this reason that the Seventh-day Adventist Church from its inception has been speaking about health and the importance of temperance and not just temperance as a moderation but temperance as the total abstinence from the things that are harmful, like alcohol, tobacco, and the moderate use of the things that are good. No matter why, uh, Paul states in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. And he further states, we glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which are his. And just in case, you're having challenge. Paul says, and you can say like Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, abstaining from the things that are hurtful and harmful to our body, my body, and using the things that are good moderately, whether it's sleep, whether it's exercise, whether it's food, I should do so in in, in, in moderation, but abstain totally from the things that are harmful. And if you have any challenges, you can contact your health ministry's leader at your church, or if you are not yet a Seventh-day Adventist, you can contact your Seventh-day Adventist friends or neighbors or anyone close to you, and they'll refer you to the appropriate person. God bless. Have a good sitting tonight. Very informative presentation, important points there to note. Thank you so very much for sharing with that with us. 
we'd like to extend a very special welcome this evening to our friends over there in Belize. Yes, welcome to you. And so at this moment, we'd like to invite Pastor Terry Tanis, the Executive Secretary, Turks and Caicos, to do the offertory appeal for us this evening. Over to you, Pastor. has been nothing short of a blessing, invigorating, revitalizing, transformative. As such, I have ensured that I am also a financial partner with the Footprints of Hope Evangelistic Series. And tonight, I invite you to partner with us, wherever you're viewing from, wherever you're, you're viewing from, to, and, and, and being blessed. I invite you to partner with us. Of course, on the screen, we have a QR code. You can choose from whatever uh, site you would like to make your contribution. And we encourage you to be a blessing to someone else. After all, the life that is transformed could be your very own. On behalf of our dear evangelists, I would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to your financial contribution to the Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus Evangelistic Series. God bless you. I stood on the banks of a wide raging river to resting that I could get across See I've made my way through some valleys and deserts Believing that I'd never get lost Been at the foot of what felt like Mount Everest Knowing I have the strength for the climb Through every trials, each test and temptation one thing is sure every time Over and over, again and again, God is faithful Over and over, again and again, through it all He's made me able to stand and survive, to come through So I'll claim the victory over and over again If you ask me why, I have no hesitation God does what He says He would do I'd simply say every battle has taught me There's nothing he won't help me through So why should I dwell on the hardships and struggles When I look just beyond them I see The way this will end is with a great celebration Deep in my heart I Again and again through it all He's made me able To stand and survive To come through alive When it sure looked like I could win Jesus is with me So I'll claim the victory
again. Jesus fights the battles and we claim the victory. Isn't that awesome? Well, if you're just joining us, we want to say welcome to the Footprints of Hope Walking with Jesus Evangelistic Online Series broadcasting live right here in Montego Bay. We want to also welcome those of you who are joining on the Deaf community. Remember to follow the YouTube page for that special link. Well, at this time, I'd just like to tell you that we are about to visit the mercy seat where hope resides. Remember that hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised and his strength in his faithfulness to fulfill it. And so right now, we invite President of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists to join us for prayer right now to take us at the mercy seat. Let us pray. Eternal Father, God of unlimited grace, God of abundant mercy and unending love, we approach your throne of mercy and grace this evening and we come with tremendous confidence because we come in no other name but in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we come realizing that it is in you that we live and we move and we have our being. We are totally dependent upon thee. Oh, Father, this evening we want to just praise you and thank you for the millions who have already been blessed through the ministry of this Footprints of Hope evangelistic uh, crusade. Oh, Father, as we come this evening, we come with open hearts and contrite, heart, contrite hearts. Oh, Father, we pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you will feed us Feed us, Father, please, with your word one more time. We're thankful for the Holy Spirit who has been with us and continues to be with us. We pray, Father, this evening as your word is presented, that your Holy Spirit will enlighten our minds, will quicken our understanding, that your Holy Spirit will lead every one of us who are listening, wherever we are in the world, to make an appropriate response to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Father, your son, your servant, Pastor Glenn Samuel, you have been using him mightily night after night. But this evening, Father, he needs a fresh anointing. So throughout uh, these five English-speaking unions and, and even abroad, further abroad, further afield. Oh, God, we pray this evening on behalf of your servant that you will, oh, God, visit him one more time and touch him as you have never touched him before. Father, give him clear thoughts. We pray tonight, Father, that you will give him a special confidence and assurance Give him the power of persuasion. Oh God, let the love of Jesus flow through your manservant as he pre presents your word this evening. Spirit of God, move upon Pastor Glenn Samuel to lift up Jesus Christ as he has never done before. And grant, oh God, that we who are listening will get a fresh glimpse, fresh, fresh glimpse of the love of God and spirit of God. We pray that you will draw us all closer to Jesus Christ. Father, this evening, there are so many needs that are represented by our listeners. And so we want to present them to you knowing God that we can never ever deplete the resources of heaven and we come standing on the promise in Philippians 4.19, where you have promised God 
that you are willing to meet our every need. And so God represent some of these needs on the chat before you. Reborn Red from Grenada, praying for her children and for her family. We want to bring before you Carol Thomas from Trinidad, who is asking for special prayer. We want to pray for Boxer Fernandez in Texas, asking for special prayer for her sister who is sick with cancer. We pray, oh God, this evening, joining with Angela Lowell from Jamaica, who wants prayer for her family. We pray for Sonia Brown. We pray for Ro Ro Roxanne, who is asking for prayer for Kalia. We pray for Kanisha and Blossom, who are asking for prayers for the family. Oh God, there are many others who have expressed uh, their heart's desire for prayer on our platforms. But we are not able to call every name, but God, I pray this evening that you'll give them the assurance that you have heard the cry. And oh, Father, help them to have the assurance that you, the God of love and mercy and grace, you are going to answer every sincere prayer. And now help each one as those prayers are answered to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Father, this evening, we place the rest of this program in your hand. Have your own way, God. Just have your own way. Save souls. Save souls this evening. And may the glory and the honor and the praise be only yours. We ask all this in the name of your son, our soon coming savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Sash, precious Lord. Take my hand. Lead me on. <laughs> Help me stand. Well, who can do that better? Who I can do that better? And tonight we have in the house oh, yes. somebody you and I know very well from the United States of America. All right. The renowned yes. international singer, uh -huh. Angela Prim. Angela Prim, she said it. Angela drum roll, everybody, and clap. Ta -ta -na 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 -na. Drum roll, drum roll. Let's do that again. <laughs> and now we will go right on over to Angela Prim as she blesses our soul with that powerful voice in ministry. Enjoy. Be blessed. Thank you. Thank you for such a wonderful introduction. Glad to be here. Hallelujah. We can go ahead and start it. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Oh, give me just a little bit more track, will you? <laughs> there we go, right there. We're talking about a fresh anointing. There's nothing fresher than the blood of Jesus. Never forget about the blood of Jesus. Keep singing about the blood. Listen. What can wash away my sin? And you say, nothing but the blood <laughs> What can make be whole again, nothing but the blood. Yeah. Singing, oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no, the pound I know, oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Double time right here, come on. Oh, precious. Come on, let's go to church, will you? Yeah, that, that makes me white as <laughs> No other fault I know of. Oh, Woo, nothing but the blood. Oh, listen. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, thank God for the blood. You know that? Yeah. 
Just put a hallelujah in the chat. Put a raise hand. Put a praise the Lord. Put something. Are you washed? Are you washed? Yes. And I can still feel it. In the spirit. And so I believe we have the... And so even at this very moment, Sashalyn, we need to ensure that our viewers, our friends hear from our co-hosts. Pastor Eric Clark. He's from the Bahamas, a beautiful island of Bahamas. We also want to send a special shout out to all our friends, whoever you all are. All our friends. Wherever you are in Bahamas, the Bahamas, watching us at the moment. Remember to share that link. We want to say hi to you. We're going over right now to Pastor Eric Clark. Pastor to Clark, are you us. here? How are you, sir? Are I you am. with us? Thank you so much. Yes. And good evening to everyone. It's a joy to be able to greet you in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. We're so grateful that we've come to this particular juncture in the program. And it's been a wonderful blast, if you would say it. Uh, we're grateful. I am happy to stand in the gap and represent some wonderful islands. Of course, uh, Cayman Islands, where yes. we say it's founded upon the seas. And then there's beautiful by nature, Turks and Caicos, and of course the Bahama Islands where we say that Christ or God lives in the Bahamas even though he takes vacations to other places. But to my beautiful co-host this evening, I want to thank you for the opportunity and I just want to sing, signal the importance of prayer in these meetings. We recognize that what keeps the evangelist is prayer power. And there are persons who are praying every day around the clock for these meetings, for the evangelists, and we want to thank God for that. So I pass it over to you. I'm so excited just to be with you tonight. We're looking forward again to another powerful yes. move of God's Holy Spirit. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. And for those who know about it, we say happy Sabbath. All God right. bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. <laughs> amen, amen. Amen. And guys, we must tell you that Pastor uh, Clark mm -hmm. is very familiar with Jamaica, you very know, guys. Very familiar, even more than I am, Sash. I know, right? Yes. And we just hope, well, I hope that one day I'll be able to visit the Bahamas where you can take me on a tour. Yes. Yes, and give me some nice Caribbean food other than <laughs> that of Jamaica. And so we just want to interact with some of our audience sure. on YouTube. But before we do that, let's just say uh, happy Sabbath to those of you joining in Belize. Happy Sabbath to those in Grenada. 
Happy Sabbath to those in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, or good evening, rather, everybody. Wherever you are joining from this evening, we say to you, welcome. You are still in for a treat. And while you are at it, we are going to ask you, Kamara, to just drop your flags in the <laughs> chat. Yes. Right? Just send your flags in the chat. After all, we are in the modern age of communication and Amen. talking. Tonight, we're looking at DWL, you know. DWL. What does that what does usually that mean? mean in Jamaican uh, well, dialect? Everywhere, dead with love, right? Dying but, with laughter. But, but tonight, yes. Sash, I, I love the fact that the, the, the pastor, Pastor Samuels, has played on the word yes. DWL. What does that mean? Dying without. And what's the other one? Pastor, what's the other what's one? The what's other the L? One? Life. All right. Living. Dying without living. Dying without living. living. Yeah, man. That's it. <laughs> and so we're asking you, if you haven't already shared the link, now is the opportune time to do so. Because not too long from now, the minister will take the pulpit. And let me tell you, God will speak through him as he have been doing all the nights before now. And I can assure you that a blessing awaits you. Indeed. And so we want to encourage you, if you've not yet subscribed to the various platforms, we're encouraging you to do that for us right now. Subscribe to them, like the various Facebook pages, and importantly, share the link. Be the minister of the gospel. Tell a friend to tell a friend that something grand is happening here. And so now we go over to the next item, which we will be graced by. Angela Prim, get ready to dance yes. and spin around because Ooh. you are in for a treat. Over to you, Angela Prim. It's my desire to be filled with the Lord. How about you? Every morning. Every morning. This is an old song of the church. Like the woman at the way, I was seeking for things that would not satisfy. But I heard my Savior calling. He said, draw from the well <laughs> that never shall run dry. So I said, here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord, cup and quench this thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven, deep till I won't know. There are millions in this world who are craving for earthly pleasures this world affords, but no. Jesus Christ, my 
sing it the old fashioned way. Here's my cup, Lord. <laughs> I, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quit this thirsting of my soul. Bread of yourself. You just got to sing it unto the Lord. You don't need no audience. You don't, you don't need a, you, The church is in you. The church is in you. Oh, COVID has taught us how to be alone. Now you've got to be with your master. Come and quench. Come and quench. Ah, I'm thirsty for you. I need you, Lord. This thirsting of my soul. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. He's here to fill your cup. Feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill my cup. I lift it up. I lift it up. I lift it up. I said I lift it up, Lord. You've got to see it, Lord. I lift it up. The lover of my soul. I worship you tonight, Lord. So make me If you ever questioned the sovereignty of God, wondering if he sees you, if he knows you, wondering if he loves you, listen to what he did for you. He molded and built a small lonely hill that he knew would be called Calvary. Then he made a seed that would grow to be thorns that would make his son believe. Then he made a green stone. Gave it leaves and then gave it sunshine and rain and, and, and sheltered it with moss. Then he grew the tree that he knew would be used to make the old rugged grow. With great love, he 
Can I say, welcome to my sister from another mother. Welcome to Montique Bay. Thank you for having me. It's a blessing to me. It's a joy having oh, you. My it's a wonderful yes. honor to have you. We're blessed with your presence. And oh, we look forward to a wonderful weekend together. Yes. I want to ask your daughter to send all your belongings down to Montique Bay. God has been good to us, and we pause just to praise his name for his loving kindness. Great is his faithfulness. If God has blessed you today, I want to see you type it in the chat. I am blessed. It may not be all that you desired, but if it's better than it could have been, I'd like you to type in the chat, I am blessed. If you have had a rough day and you're thanking God you've made it through today, I want to type it in the chat, I've made it. If you thought that there were times in your life when you would not have made it, but you're glad tonight by the grace of God that you've made it, I wanted to type in the chat, I have made it. And so we welcome the... We have singers. I never said sinners. I said we have singers. And I want to welcome the Granvilles. And they're going to be with me tonight in our song of testimony that God has been good to us. And so, on your mark, get set, and here they are ready to go with our song testifying that all of our lives God has been faithful. And we want to sing of the goodness of God. Yes. I love you, Lord. For his mercy never fails. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I of the goodness of God.
This moment, oh God, it is yours, designed by you. Before I took my first breath, so let not this sinful lump of wretched clay hinder what you want done tonight. I ask for the cleansing that comes only from the blood of Jesus Christ. Climb down in this place and in cyberspace. Take this lump of sinful clay and according to the multitude of your loving kindness, wash my heart one more time. Cleanse this life one more time. Let the blood of Christ be applied afresh for the glory of your name and the fulfillment of your divine purpose. Somebody somewhere, some young man, some young lady someplace need a word from heaven. So push me aside, God. Take over for the glory of your name is our asking in Jesus' name and let God's children say amen. Last weekend I learned of the sudden death of the wife of a good friend of mine, Dr. Noel Morgan. And I ask you to pray for him. And today he asked me to express on behalf of his family their thanks to you for your prayers, your calls, and your compassionate understanding. Today I join with members of my wife's family laying to rest Heather's husband and the grief could almost be touched with my naked hand and long after the flowers would have faded heart would still be wrapped in the velvet blanket of sorrow there are countless persons who have died never having the chance to live. It sounds kind of paradoxical. I have buried my own cousin dead at seven from cancer. And like me, he loved dumplings. And one of the saddest encounters with his sister was when he couldn't swallow they cut up the dumplings in small pieces, but he couldn't swallow. And he looked up at his sister whom he followed, and the statement broke my heart as he said, tell Jesus, I don't want to die. Just seven years of age, having not yet experienced the bubble of teenage life, the joy of a young adult life. He'd never seen outside of his mother and his siblings, he'd never seen the twinkle and the sparkle in a lover's eyes. He'd never had those love words spoken. You know those words that, that young people, yes, yes, you don't look at me like you're a saint. Don't, don't look at me, Pastor Williams, like you've never spoken them. You know those words, yes, those words. He'd never had the chance to look a teenage lover in the eye and use those words that you've grown accustomed to using. He died without ever having experienced what it is to be a teenager. He died without ever having experienced the bubble and the joy of having, received, having to receive his first check from his first job. He died without ever having the dream and the joy of walking down the aisle with this bubbling anticipatory joy waiting to say I do many a youngster die without living and if that's sad to you greater is the sorrow of those who would have lived until their adult life live past their teenage years 
lived past their 20s and their 30s, 40s and 50s, lived even up to 70 and 80. They've lived a long life. Yes, they've added years to their existence, but they have never experienced real life. And they come down to kiss a dying pillow without ever experiencing real life. And I stopped by your place, young man. I, I stopped by your virtual space, uh, Gen Zers. I stopped by your corner, yes, in Greenvale. I stopped by your screen in the Berry Islands. I stopped by your screen in Waterworks. I just stopped by your screen in Almontown just to engage you for a few moments. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, Ecclesiastes 7, the word declares, and I'd like to read in your hearing, verse 16, be not overmuch righteous, neither make thyself overwise. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? One translation said, be wise and take the counsel of a wise road and be not wicked. And yet in being wise, do not be conceited for you can destroy yourself. And then come the troubling line, why shouldest thou die before thy time? I want to share with you this evening that it was never God's intention that we should die. I told you that the other evening didn't die. But let me tell you something else. Job chapter 14 and verse 1. Job 14. Job 14. Run with me quickly. We're going to work the text tonight. We're going to work the Bible. I'm taking a little breather from my favorite book, Isaiah. So jump with me. We're going to go to Job. Can you help the old man find Job? It comes after Genesis. Am I not right? There's silence in the house. Job chapter 14, Job 14, walk with me, Job 14. Man that's born of woman is a few days. Listen to me carefully. He said, man that is born of woman is a few days and is full of trouble. Young people face trouble. Trouble from childhood diseases. Teenagers face trouble. Trouble comes without your age or station, without your position. Trouble comes. I've buried more young people. I don't want you to be a, in a morbid sense tonight, but listen to me. We're going to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Are you listening to me? Man that's born of woman, and I think that is all of us, even if you were by Caesarean delivery, is of few days and full of trouble. And I go back to the last line of the text I read, why shouldest thou die before thy time? And then he said, then he said, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, listen to me, Ecclesiastes 3, 14, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall stand forever. God established the order of life. God established the, he is the source of life. And when sin entered, God loved you so much that he decided he would not alter the issue. He would send reinforcement to be on your side. What did Jesus say when he addressed the devil? He said, the devil is a thief. The thief comes not to steal and to kill and destroy. He said the devil comes and he cometh not only. His coming is to steal your joy, to steal your hope, to destroy your chances. But the very same text Jesus said, but I am come. 
The devil comes to kill you, but I am come. The devil comes so that you may die without ever having experienced real life, but I am come. It's not just dying with laughter. It's dying without hope. Dying without ever having experienced real life. The devil comes to steal and to kill and destroy. But I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. There are two Greek words in this New Testament that talks about life and Christ could have used, the New Testament writer could have used the one that deals with common life from which we get the word biology. He could have used the Greek word bios, speaking of ordinary life, regular life, common life. But if all you have is just regular life, you will die without ever experiencing real life. If in this life you have hope, he said you'll be most miserable. Walk with me, young people. Have you ever gone to the funeral service of a young friend that you thought would be alive with you until old age? Walk with me, young people. Walk with me, Gen Zers. Have you ever gone to the parlor? I'm not talking about the dancing parlor. I'm talking about the funeral parlor. Just to stand there and look at the lifeless remains of your young friend and you ought to say to yourself, it could have happen to me so young little girl at the graveside in the cemetery her childhood friend they walked to school together she was just nine they were in kindergarten together they were in bible class together now they started primary school but a car driven by a drunken driver knocked her friend dead and the old country graveside the little girl couldn't understand it it wasn't a nice vault made of concrete and steel it was the old country grave and as the tiny casket was being lowered and the stones and dirt were pounding the casket carrying her friend she looked up at her daddy and with tears in her eyes she said daddy daddy is this all there is to life is this all there is to friendship, daddy? Is this all there is to a friend? And like a good father, he stooped down on, on his knees right by the graveside so he could look her eyeball to eyeball. And he placed his hand on her shoulder and pulled her close to him, looking in her eyes as if to, to beam uh, from him to her a kind of conviction. He said to his daughter, Honey, this is not all there is to friendship. This is not all there is to life. Remember, I talk with you about a savior who is Jesus. Remember, we talk about Bethlehem's manger. Remember, we talk about Mary's baby. Remember, we talk about Calvary's cross. Remember, I told you that though he died on the cross, he rose from the dead. Remember, and she said, yes, daddy. Are you saying, daddy, the same way he rose from the dead, my friend will rise? And the father smiled and said yes because Jesus broke the bands of death asunder we can die with life assurance we can die with life insurance we can die with the insurance of eternal life because blessed are, are you listening to me hear me carefully hear me carefully this is a pleasure sick generation we spend our days in pleasure madness this is a greed saturated materialistically censored society this is a society where money means more to some than than good sense this is a world where we live our lives sailing on the ocean and the quest for materialism has turned some into twisted revolutionaries hear me carefully if you worship only at the shrine of pleasure you'll be vain and empty and collapsed on the inside 
D-Y-L for the time may be that you're dying with laughter but when the music is out and the lights are out and your head come down to touch a restless pillar there is no peace that music can give there is no lasting peace that sex can give there is no lasting peace that drugs can give I've come by just to tell you real life can't be found in the dance hall real life can't be found in drugs real life can only be found in the man who gave life in the first place his name is J E S U S some call him the rose of Sharon some call him the lily of the valley but I call him Jesus for the angel said thou shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins and I hear him say in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10 whatsoever thy hand find to do do it with all thy might for there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Whatever your hand find to do, I do enjoy a good laughter. I learn to laugh at myself. There's nothing wrong with having a good talk with yourself. The problem comes if you answer publicly. But you ought to learn to have long talks with yourself. Ecclesiastes was written by David's wayward son. Yes, he wrote Ecclesiastes on his return journey after 20 years of backsliding. He married this one wife and then another and then another and then another and then another and he got past 365 days and he got to 700 and then he got 300 of the spare tires but he learned young people that life is more than temporary laughter he spoke about music he spoke about Dancing, he spoke about party, he spoke about money, he spoke about all the things that would put laughter on your face. He spoke about all of these stuff. And then after 20 years, he realized that there's more to life than casual laughter. He buried his father. He saw his brother's death and after trying his hand at all of the music and all of the myrrh and all of the gold and all of the silver he would write his recollections the summary of what he had learned and so he writes from the perspective of looking back have you ever heard the song Looking back over my life. He's looking back over his life. He 
began from his days as a youth when he got the kingdom and he said to God, I am only a youngster. I don't know how to go out or how to come in. Give me a wise heart that I may do my duty as you would have it. And God gave him that. But he took the wisdom that God gave him and he made a mess of his life. And so he writes on his return journey. And maybe I should jump to the conclusion of this, his second piece. In the 12th chapter, he said, Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. I'm going to take my time tonight. I have a few minutes left. So he, he jumps down to the conclusion. He said, remember your creator. This is the wisest man who ever lived. Wiser than the man who split the atom. Remember your creator. But, but come back. Come back with me to the second chapter. Ecclesiastes 2. I said in my heart, I will prove myself with myrrh. I will prove myrrh. I will prove pleasure. Behold, this also is madness. Verse 2, I said of laughter, D-Y-L, dying with laughter. I said of laughter, it is M-A-D. It doesn't last. I said of laughter, it is mad. Why, Solomon, I sought in my heart to give myself to wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom to lay hold on folly till I might see what good the sons of men would get from this. I made me great works, I builded me houses, I planted me vineyards, I made me gardens and orchards, I planted trees in them of all kind, I made me pools of water to water them, I got me men servant and maid servants, servants born in my house, I had great possession of cattle, small and great, above all that were in Jerusalem. I gathered me also silver and gold and the precious treasure, the peculiar treasure of kings and of the promises. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. So I was great and increase more than all who were before me and whatsoever mine eyes desired I kept not from them and then I looked on all the works of my hands I looked on all the things I have amassed I looked on all the stuff and all the labor and I have discovered it is vain and the vexation of spirit. And then he asked himself the question, why was I more wiser than the sons of men? D-Y-L, dying with laughter. He had it, pleasure. The things you and I chase after. He named them here. He listed all of them. He listed all the things. Listen to me. The more things change is the more they remain the same. We chase after the same dreams. We want the same kind of pleasure. We would love to have money and fame and fortune. We'd love to get to a place where we have servants doing all the things we don't want to do. Solomon said, I had it all. But when I look back at it, it's vanity and vexation of spirit. And so now he writes, whatever your hand find to do, do it with your might. But you know what he said before that? He said, before he said that, he said this, the living know that they shall die, 
But the dead knows nothing. The living know that they shall die, but the dead knows nothing. Jump down to verse 19. For man also knoweth not his time. I'm reading for you the plain words of scripture. I'm reading for you Ecclesiastes 9. For man also knoweth not his time. So let me tell you what I told you. Then I will tell you what I'm going to tell you. And then I'll send you home. I told you of the little girl screaming her heart out. Because she couldn't understand why her young friend who had not yet gotten to 12 years should die. Dying without ever experiencing real long life. She couldn't understand why a life so beautiful should be cut short unexpectedly. One car accident and her friend is lifeless. She couldn't understand why her friend should be dying without ever living a long life. I told you that DWL does not only mean dying with laughter, but more so the preacher is focusing on the sober thought, dying without experiencing real life. I'm glad you asked me, what is real life preacher? I told you that Jesus said in John chapter 10, I didn't read it, I quoted it, now I'm going to read it for you. So John chapter 10. I'm, I'm telling you what I told you because I've got something else to tell you. John chapter 10. St. John chapter 10. Are you with me? So he said, I'm going to read for you from verse 9. I am the door. If life is like a building, Christ is saying, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he'll be all right. Then he said in verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. But I am come. I told you he did not use the word for regular life. That word is by us. He used the Greek word zoe which means special life. Extra ordinary life. What kind of a life is that preacher? I'm glad you asked me. I'll tell you that in what I'm going to tell you. But let me finish telling you what I told you. I told you that Solomon said he tried all of the stuff we chase after. I'm telling you because you are right there. I'm telling you because sometimes I am there. Speak the truth and shame the devil. There are times I could do with a lot more money, but I discover that money can give you the peace you're seeking after. Walk with me. I'm coming down your street. I'm coming down your street. So he said, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Now let me tell you what I have not told you. If you live long enough, Somebody is going to have to take you to the shower. If you live long enough, somebody's going to have to put food to your mouth. If you live long enough, hear me, sir. Hear me, Gen Z. Hear me, man by the street corner. Listen to me, sir, in the bar. Hear me carefully. If you live long enough, you will not be able to lift the glass and put it to your mouth. If you live long enough, strength will fail. Beauty will disappear. Pleasure will not tickle you anymore. Food will have no taste to you anymore. And you'll come down to that moment where the job won't matter. I had planned to play for you this evening, Steve Jobs' closing words. I might do that tomorrow night. I thought I'd reason with you. You knew him, founder of Apple, 
got fired from the same company he founded. But he gave birth to something else. Died in his 50s, a multimillionaire. But on his deathbed, in his closing moments, he made an impassioned appeal about love and life. And I want to talk with you in the next 10 minutes about dying without living. About dying without living. About dying without living. Hear the preacher. Hear the preacher. When Nebuchadnezzar in all his conquest, came to the end of his life. He said, there is no God like the God of the heavens. I picked him first of all because he was this powerful king, not a godly king in the beginning, but he died with something he never got started with. Walk with me, walk with me, walk with me. I come to someone who died a few weeks ago. He came to this country in the midst of the struggle of his country. And Bishop Desmond Tutu made a statement that arrested my attention. He said, no matter how powerful you are, one day you'll come down to the point where the power will be gone but your life will still be in you. Desmond Tutu used a phrase that is known in the Caribbean, may not be known in some cultures. He talks about biting the dust. And I'm taking my time to wrap this up. Listen to me, young man. He came to the meeting just like you're listening to me right now. He listened, and I'm not sure why he stepped outside the building, but he walked right into where two young men were fighting, and he tried to part the fight, and a knife was plunged in his heart, and he died in the hearing of my voice. He died without ever experiencing real life. I want to look you in your face this evening. He died without ever experiencing real life. He died without ever experiencing real life. So let's take five minutes and talk about this issue of how we will live this life. There are two ways to leave it. We leave it either with Christ or without him. So let me take you back to John. And I'm taking you to John chapter 5. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's in John chapter 5. And I want to ask you to Walk with me. If I'm doing it slowly, I don't want you to miss it. So hear what he says. In John chapter 5, he speaks to Someone like you, searching, searching for something that has been eluding her all her life. And finally she came face to face with somebody who told her all her life story. And in the conversation, as they talked together, Jesus said to her, listen, what you're looking for can't be found in natural water. 
What you're looking for can't be found in the searching and the areas you're searching for it. He said, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew the gift of God and the one who's in your presence, you would seek of him living water. You'd seek of him living water. The story ended with her running back to town to invite folk to come. She's the kind of person that society would look down on. She's the kind of person whose life was wretched and miserable and worthless. But she came in contact with the life giver. And she left his presence a changed person. She called a city. Listen to me, backslider. Listen to me, former member. She came in contact with the life giver. And she left, went to a city. And they came with her and they said to her, Now we have found him for ourselves. The truth is, like the woman at the well, we've been searching. For many, the search is for money. Listen to me, businessman. Steve Jobs said he got it. He was satisfied with it. But he said as he lay on the hospital bed and he listened to the machine beeping, breathing for him, every sound he listens to tells him that very soon the last sound will be heard. And Steve Jobs made an appeal on his deathbed to every businessman in the hearing of my voice. Don't die without experiencing real life. It's more than money. It's more than wealth. It's more than fame. Solomon said, I had servants, male servants, female servants. I had ships taking money to me. But he said, vanity of vanity, it was a vexation of spirit. Then he asked the question, the question that I ask you, will you remember now your creator? Will you turn your life in a new direction? I know you're expecting me tonight to be my usual self. But today I watched a family member whose heart was overwhelmed with sorrow scream her heart out as I said dust to dust and ashes to ashes over her husband's remains in an expensive, beautiful casket. When I said to her that her husband died with a hope that death can't take away, in the midst of the tears, a smile found its way on her face. There are some things that death can't take away, but you've got to find it before you die. You've got to find it before you die. Solomon said, the living know that they shall die, but the dead knows nothing. He said, the living know that they shall die, but the dead knows nothing. He said, whatever your hand find to do, do it with your might, because there is no knowledge in the grave where you are going. And I asked them to look in the hand of our cousin in the casket, I said, what do you see in his hand? And the answer was, nothing. What do you find in his hand? The answer was nothing. And I said to them, he came into this life empty-handed, and he's leaving empty-handed. Listen to me, young lady. You can dance the night away. Do all the drugs you can do, young man. Listen to me, businessman. You can make all the money that your bank can hold. You may even own the bank. But when you come down to kiss a dying pillow, will you be dying with laughter? 
or will you be dying without life eternal? Will you be dying with laughter? Right across here, a few steps from here is the mighty Corner Regional Hospital. I told you when I spoke to you about Eve's mistake, I told you that the nurse pumped her up with morphine. But now let me take you to New York City. They've been asking me to come for a campaign and I finally turned up. One of the men who prayed and longed for it, cancer was doing its final work. They took me to his home up in New Rochelle to pray with him, walked in his room, prayed with him, encouraged his heart, came back to the tent, preached God's word. Christine Sinclair was singing, Order My Steps. And then she sang, Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. And I want to thank you. And as she sang, I want to thank you. My eyes popped open. I saw a man walking down the center aisle with both hands raised, praising God. It was the same man in whose bedroom I knelt down and prayed. The same man who prayed to God for the meetings. And for that night as he walked down, something grabbed a hold of me. God speared him, lifted him up, and they drove him down there. He walked right in there on his own two feet with both hands raised, praising Almighty God. That was his last night in there. But let me tell you, when they told me he died, I said, devil, you're a loser. When they told me he died, I know the devil lost the battle. Cancer may have taken his life, but he died with living hope. Cancer may have taken his life. Maybe he couldn't laugh out loud, but he died with living hope. And yes, I want to take you to John, St. John. Hear me now, chapter 5. And Jesus said, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all who are in the grave shall hear his voice they that sh and shall come forth, they that have done good in unto resurrection life, and they that have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. I don't care what you think about God. He tells it like it. I-T-I-S. You may not believe in God. Burn up the Bible. Shoot all the preacher. Burn down the church. But he's still God. And his words still stand. Hear me, young man. I don't care how long you live or how much money you have. But if you die without life eternal, the word of God says, the day is coming marvel not at this the hour is coming in the which all who are in the grave young men and young ladies fat people and skinny people tall people and short people rich people and poor people black people and white people powerful people and powerless people the time is coming in the which all who are in the grave shall hear his voice those who have done good shall come forth to life eternal and the wise man said the wise man said the wise man said the wise man said he said whatever your hand find to do do it with all your might listen to me former members if you've wandered from the fold buckle up your shoes do it with all your might come on back to Jesus there's a welcome mat at the door of mercy with your name on it whatever your hands find to do do it with all your might for there is no knowledge nor wisdom in the grave where you're going I don't seek to make you scared but let me tell you like it I-T-I-S you may even die before you plan to die you may even die before you think you're going to die hear the preacher the same way you die is the same way you're coming up 
if you go down into the grave as a Christless soul, you're coming up as a Christless soul. Listen to me. I don't care. You, you're going to need more than just John 3.16 in your head. You're going to need John 3.16 in your heart. You're going to need John 3.16 in your mind. You're going to need more than just Psalm 23 under your pillow. You're going to need Psalm 23 in your heart. You're going to need to know that the Lord is your shepherd, not merely by reading, but by experiential knowledge, by living in a life-changing relationship with Jesus and I hear Jesus said the same way you go to the grave he said marvel not at this make no mistake about this the hour is coming you can flex your fist in the face of God the hour is coming you may blind your mind to the call of God the hour is coming hear me backslider if God can't give it to you the devil can't do it either because anything the devil gives you he comes back for it with interest and the interest he has is in your destruction but Jesus said I am come that you may have life and have not just ordinary life but eternal life and that's the life I want to die with that's the life I want to die in marvel not at this the hour is coming in the which all who are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth those who have done good. I've heard some say, when you die, that's the end of it. I've heard some say, live now, I only have one life to live. I hear some say, that that's all there is. But I am a believer in the word. And if you have wandered from the fold, if you once walk with Jesus, if the devil sidetracked you, the worst death you could ever die is to die outside of the life that Jesus wants you to live. To die without the life that Christ wanted you to live. To die without the life insurance and assurance. I'm done. I'm done. But let me tell you, what I told you, I told you that death comes to young and old. I told you that Solomon said, all the stuff you're chasing after, he chased after it. I told you, he said, remember now your creator in the days of your youth because the evil days are coming. The evil days are coming. Why, do, why does he call them the evil days? I don't get sick often, and I thank God for that. But I do get miserable when it happens. Because you can't move how you want to, when you want to. My father was a rough gentleman. When my daddy got angry, even the bull run for cover. But I sat on my father's bed as prostate cancer was completing its work. And he could smile even at himself. And I'd tease him about the days when he was powerful and mighty. I said, before you breathe your last breath, there's something I need to talk to you about. Talk to my father about surrendering his life to God. Talk to my brother about surrendering his life to Jesus. Stood by my brother's bedside. He couldn't hear me. He's just a year and a month older than I am then. I don't talk with you about stuff that I have not experienced. And my brother had the opportunity, didn't make use of it. I stood over his body, 
the only thing that made it bearable was that he had an opportunity that you now have. I'm looking you in your eye. And tonight, I want to say to you, as my brother was, so you are. As you are, so he was. Full of life, full of strength, full of vigor. But he squandered the opportunity. He heard the call. It pained my heart. But I couldn't twist his arm. And God wouldn't do it to make him obey. Earlier at the graveside of my wife's cousin, I remembered my own brother. And I'm talking to you right now. Whatever your hand find to do, do it now. I make the appeal to you in the quietness of this moment. I want you to say, precious Lord, take my hand. You may feel that you don't have the strength to make it. But I want you to say tonight, precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on and help me stand. Because tomorrow, backslider, find a gown. Find a change of garment. It is your baptism. Tomorrow, young man, you have a date with destiny. Tomorrow, tomorrow is the day that begins the rest of your life. A new life, a changed life. And Solomon said, the living know that they shall die, but you don't know when. And he said, as a bird is caught in a snare, so also the sons of men. And Angela is going to sing a song, and as you listen, I want you to make a decision. I want the song to be the prayer in your heart. You're tired, you're weak, you're own. You've come through the storm, you've come through the battle. Maybe you've been so battered and worn, you're giving up even on God. And yet, that's your best and only hope. I'm talking to a lady right now. Your marriage has failed. I'm talking to a man. You, your job has let you down and you feel like nothing else makes sense. Here's a song for you. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on and help me stand. I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Listen to me, young man in the storms of pleasure, young lady. This song is for you. Precious Lord. Take my hand Leave me on And let me stand Oh Lord, I, I am tired And I
the darkness appears and the night draws near when the day is past and the God, oh Lord, ooh, if the going home. Don't die without experiencing life. Don't die without the limitless value of eternal salvation. There's that card on your screen as wherever you are. There may be a pastor in your presence with a card just for you. And I've been inviting you all week this week, but tonight I just want to lift you up to Almighty God as you make that decision to ask him to lead you home. Now our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. God of everlasting salvation, our laughter is punctuated with sorrow. Our pleasure is filled with pain. We're dying each day without life. Some are dying without ever experiencing what it is to be really alive. Precious Lord, take our hands. Deep down now in somebody's heart is a desire to surrender. They're weak tired and worn. Sometimes, God, we've become so tired that we can hardly even hear your voice. Take that hand. There's a lady crying someplace, God. Take that hand. There's a young lady, God, that once walked with you. She's tired of failure, tired of pain. There's a young man, God, tired of his own mistake. God, there is that senior citizen tired of washing her face with liquid frustration as her own tears seem to fall like the unending waters of Niagara. Precious Lord, take that hand. Tomorrow, God, tomorrow is the baptism. Tonight, somebody need a miracle. Somebody tonight, God, needs a life-changing miracle. Some young man, some young lady, take that hand, God. Hear that prayer that they can't even put into words. Take that hand. 
Lead them on to a higher plane. Take that hand, God. Lead them out of the prison house of sin. Take that hand and lead them out of the darkness they're in into the glorious liberty of everlasting salvation. We ask you, God, give us a word tomorrow. Give us a word, a word that will become a chain breaker. Give us a word, God, that shall become a mind fixer. Give us a word tomorrow, God, that will become a way maker. Give us a word, God, that will defeat the devil and bring glory to your name and salvation to our hearts. Thank you. Take us home now. And may your grace abide with us is our asking in Jesus' name. I know that uh, many of you are looking for our Zoom VIP room tonight. But we will see you tomorrow night. Be assured of our prayer tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night. Oh, may the grace of Almighty God be with you. And join us tomorrow. All the platforms are open at 9 o'clock. But the divine service begins at 10.30. We'll see you then as I hand you over to our host. Good night. And I apologize to my friends who will be lining up for the Zoom room tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night. God bless you. Amen. Another powerful message. Sash, wouldn't you agree? Oh, Captain Pastor Pete. Clark, a very sobering message tonight, sir. What do you say? It has been. What a word tonight. God used the evangelist in a unique and special and different way, and it came out of his experience even today. Yeah. We've got a lot of people who are saying a lot of stuff. They talk about how something has to take you. Well, the evangelist has cleared all of that up from the word of God, and he does not want us to, to die without living. Amen. Amen. Yeah? Thank you so much for that, Sash. Well, it has absolutely been a pleasure. And, you know, the one question I ask, how do you want to die? Yes. In Christ or out of Christ? That decision, essentially, is yours. And so we just want to thank you this evening if you joined us on any one of the platforms mentioned earlier, whether it was from St. Vincent, St. Kitts, uh, the Bahamas, NCU Radio TV, GEM Radio, all the conferences and unions platforms, Hope, Hope Beyond, Hope Beyond. Dot net, yes. I should say, mm -hmm. and wherever. If you joined us even in the community while you were sitting on the street watching the big screen, we thank you for joining. And so you know, and you heard what the preacher said, all platforms are open at 9 in the morning, but the Footprints of Hope starts 10.30. Yes. Indeed. I just wanted to, Indeed. if you would allow me to, I just wanted to say that tonight has to be a night of decision for everybody. Yes. It has to be a night of prayer. This decision has to be based and bathed in prayer. And my friend, as you watch this platform, as you heard and sensed the heart of our evangelist tonight, I want you to pray before you go to bed. Put it all on the altar of sacrifice. And tomorrow morning, wake up with a joy in your heart. Yes. I am giving everything to Jesus. Thank Absolutely. you so much, co-hosts. Amen. And so we want to thank you, Pastor Clark, for hosting with us tonight. It was an absolute pleasure. And we'd like to thank every one of you who tuned in. And so on behalf of the entire technical and production teams, we say good night and see you tomorrow at 9 to 10.30 a.m. Miami time. Right. Remember to share that link. God loves you. Be the minister. Good night, guys. <laughs>